Okay, how do I send a message? Uh, Duke and Sue don't have. Don't screw it up, Alan. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, Alan. Alan, go up in the corner with the three dots where it says more and hit on, hit that, and then it'll say chat. Did you know that the Triangle Aquatic Center mm -hmm. is currently hiring yeah. lifeguards, swim okay. instructors, <laughs> and event Do you see it, Alan? <laughs> Which one do I? Is it sent? Is Push it anything you want, Alan. I haven't written anything. <laughs> your, your computer. So, no, Alan, there's too. there's three little dots in the upper. Uh, right. Good morning. good morning and good morning to everyone out there who's watching us and worshiping with us this morning. Glad to have all of you here. There are some announcements and also our usual prayer concerns. Um, Marie, let's start with you. So it is October and last year, because of the pandemic, we did trunk or treat as a service to the community. And we're gonna do it again. We've already got a lot of the advertising out. We've sent home invitations to the Wee Bears and it'll be on the village sign this week. So what is trunk or treat? It's where we wanna have as many trunks or back of cars out in our parking lot decorated with a bowl of candy or treats to hand out to folks coming through. So this offers a safe way for children in our community to still enjoy a holiday celebration. And it's kind of an opportunity for us to show that, you know, we do things other than just have our, our church noisy on a Sunday morning. So any of you that think you can do it, now it can be as simple as open the back of your trunk and put a decorated, um, tablecloth in there and a couple of pumpkins and smile. There will be a little bit of the Emerald City there though and a very old looking Dorothy. So feel free to dress up in a costume too. <laughs> so I encourage folks, invite your friends. There are some of these forms out on the table. Um, feel free to invite anyone because um, it's a great place. So it'll be on Halloween on Sunday from two to 4 p.m. So hope to see you there and please let Laura or myself know if you are going to come with a decorated trunk so we can kind of organize so that it's a nice safe passage for the children. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. There are some other announcements as well uh, immediately following worship this morning. Um, the Pastor Parish Relations Committee will be meeting upstairs. Uh, today is the crop walk. And we don't usually participate in the walk itself, but if you would like to contribute to crop, um, there is a box out in the narthex. You simply need to place your dollar bills there. And with a reminder that about 25% of the money that we collect remains here in our community uh, servicing our two food pantries. Uh, also a reminder that um, Next Sunday, in addition to John being with us uh, in his music ministry, um, his granddaughter Clara will also be here and playing for us. And it will also be children's time next Sunday. And uh, we're, we're going to have a great children's time. It is going to be an interview with Mr. Foot. Did you know that feet can talk? And then lastly, um, we've been assigned a date for our charge conference. It's November 1st, it's a Monday night, and our district superintendent will actually be here with us. So we won't have a substitute this year. Uh, Nola will be here, and um, we've had good times with Nola in the past, so I hope we can get good participation this year as well. Now, prayer concerns. Um, the list doesn't seem to grow any shorter. Um, the first person on the list is Bill Baldwin. Bill was hospitalized at Krauss 
returned home and then was rushed to Kraus again and is still hospitalized. Uh, Derwood Bodley, Harriet Bullis, Carol Cobb, Isabel Damon, uh, Cedric Francis, we continue to offer our prayers for Cedric's continued recovery. Uh, Steve Hammond, we announced last week that uh, Steve lost his wife, Sandy. I talked with Steve on the phone this week, and we want to continue to remember him. Jason Markle, Addie Martin, Charles and Lois Roberts. I talked with Lois. Uh, she and Charles are both in Saratoga Springs now, and Charles lost his brother in recent days. Uh, Jean Sinnott, uh, I visited Jean the other day. She's in good spirits. She seems to be doing well. And then also Eli McHugh. He is the nephew of Kim Gignard, um, underwent this past Friday surgery at Sloan Kettering Clinic. And then lastly, um, word on the news this morning, from Haiti that 18 Christian missionaries have been kidnapped uh, and there are some children included in that. So certainly our prayers are spreading um, beyond our community and beyond our borders even this morning. So those are the announcements. Those are the prayer concerns. And I'd invite us to turn to our bulletins and join in the call to worship. The glory of God shines all around us as we gather this morning to worship, and God's glory shines through everyone who seeks to worship the divine in spirit and in truth. Praise be to God for the ongoing gifts of love, grace, and forgiveness. Our hymn is number 139. You'll note that the stanzas are one, four, and five. Thank you. May we all pray together. O compassionate God, lift us to a lofty and holy purpose, we pray. Help us to view all persons from the vantage point of the cross, where all hostility was conquered and all forgiveness assured. In the name of Christ, amen. John, good morning. Good morning. 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm going to sing a, a hymn. Uh, it's on page 189 in the hymnal, um, and it is one of the great hymns of our faith. It's Fairest Lord Jesus. Uh, Fairest Lord Jesus is a, is a really old hymn. As a matter of fact, it was uh, called the Crusaders hymn uh, for a, quite a long time. It was considered uh, uh, to be a hymn that was uh, actually sung by 12th century Crusaders on their way to the Holy Land. Um, that is a myth. Uh, there's, there's no evidence uh, that, uh, that supports uh, that, that it goes back that far. But um, a, a lot of people thought, thought it did. As a matter of fact, Franz Liszt wrote an oratorio in which he, um, he featured the Crusaders chorus, and it was a Ferris Lord Jesus. It was a treatment of, of Ferris Lord Jesus. Um, this hymn actually was probably written uh, around 1620, uh, um, or, or at least sung around 1520, maybe not put to paper. Um, by a, a group of followers of a gentleman by the name of John Hus, who uh, fled from Bohemia into what is now Poland during uh, the Bohemian Anti-Reformation purge. Uh, it didn't actually show up on paper until uh, 1662. And thank God for Jesuit priests. I think at some point, God must have revealed himself to the Jesuits and said, please write this stuff down because uh, they, they became the archivists of so much that we now know today and wouldn't know otherwise. So uh, um, German Jesuits uh, wrote it down and uh, it has been, um, the, the text and the, uh, and the melody have, have flourished since then. It's, uh, it shows up in more than 60% of all hymnals, which is quite, quite high uh, uh, percentage. In fact, in fact, um, I read uh, while reading about the hymn this week that it is, it served as the inspiration and uh, for the theme, the first theme of the movie Frozen, when Frozen opens up, it's Ferris Lord Jesus is, 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 the source for, the, for that first theme. I have grandchildren, I drive them everywhere. I have listened to, to Frozen, the entire uh, movie track 50 times. My, my granddaughters are in back of me going, let it go, let it go. And I'm up there driving saying, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> and I, when I read that, I said, no, that, that's not true, it couldn't be. So I, I checked it out and there is a, it's true, it's true. There is a Norwegian treatment of Ferris Lord Jesus that goes back away. And um, if you go to YouTube and uh, YouTube, um, I think the lady's name is Sissel. She's, uh, she's singing with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir and it is a spectacular treatment of, of uh, Ferris, Ferris Lord Jesus, I would, I would recommend it to you. But it, it is true that um, the, there is a Nor Norwegian version of Ferris Lord Jesus, and it was that, it was that version that uh, inspired the first theme from Frozen. Aren't, aren't you glad I shared that with you? Yes. <laughs> so here, a beautiful hymn, beautiful hymn. Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, O Thou of God and man, the Son, we will I cherish, we will I honor, Thou my soul's glory, joy, and crown. Fair are the meadows, fair are still the woodlands, robed in the blooming garb of spring. Jane 
Jesus is fairer, Jesus is pure, who makes the woeful heart to sing. Fair is the sunshine, fairer still the moonlight, and all the twinkling starry host. Jesus shines brighter, Jesus shines purer than all the angels heaven can boast. Beautiful Savior, Lord of all the nations, Son of God and Son of Man, glory and honor, praise, adoration, now and forevermore be So thank you twice, John, uh, for the music, but also for the homework assignment. And between football games today, I might check that out. <laughs> thank you. Matthew's Gospel records Jesus saying this. So then, anyone who hears these words of mine and obeys them is like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain poured down, the rivers flooded over, and the wind blew hard against that house. But it did not fall because it was built on rock. But anyone who hears these words of mine and does not obey them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain poured down, the rivers flooded over, the wind blew hard against that house, and it fell. And what a terrible fall that was. Let's pray together. Almighty and loving God, sometimes our faces are smiles of joy. An ongoing ministry is enhanced, or someone is discharged from the hospital, or a project is successfully completed, or the colored hillsides begin to boast of your glory. In such moments of joy, we turn to you with thanksgiving but sometimes our faces are lined with worry. Hostilities in our nation, in other nations, on our streets, even in our homes. There's continued fear amid a public health crisis. We worry about our safety in such a dangerous world. And we continue to be troubled by the political climate. So in our time of need, we lift our petitions unto you, knowing that adequate strength and divine comfort is available through our asking. May we know yet again your everlasting grace amid our floundering and our sin. You are the one upon whom we call, knowing that even before we ask, your mercy is sufficient and your wondrous love will not let us go. Hear this, our prayer we ask, and hear us now as we pray together silently.
The same Jesus who talked about building houses also reminds us to pray together when we gather together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will now receive our morning offering. you might accept the gifts of these your servants and grant that the work to which they are devoted may always prosper under your guidance. Amen. Our hymn is number 62, the first four stanzas, and actually it has nothing to do with a sermon, but it has everything to do with our earlier Sunday school class when we talked about Francis of Assisi and the words to this hymn are attributed to one of Francis' poems many, many years ago.
A young couple with three sons bought an old farm on the outskirts of a small Pennsylvania town. The stone farmhouse was more than 150 years old. Being young and ambitious, the father and the mother undertook the renovation of the property themselves. Maintenance all these years had been nil, except adding one layer of wallpaper over another. It all had to be scraped off to find the plaster underneath. Outside, five acres of property had become nothing short of a jungle. But the parents were excited by the challenge. On the floor upstairs, right in the traffic pattern, was a wooden cleat, a piece of wood jutting up from the floor. The wide floorboards themselves were pine, but the cleat was oak. The father wanted to pull it up, discard it, throw it away until the mother pointed out that it had been fastened with old square nails, indicating that it had been there for many years. Well, one day, the former owner, a woman who had lived in the place for over 50 years, stopped by to see what they were doing to her house. The couple asked, about the wooden strip. Why, goodness sakes, she said, that's how you get into the attic. At first, this explanation was as puzzling as the strip of wood itself. Oh and then 
they realized that it must have been fastened there to keep a ladder to the attic from slipping. Without this strip, it would have been impossible for a person to mount the ladder alone. Someone would have to hold the bottom to keep it steady. The cleat provided a firm foundation for the ladder. Life today seems to be missing firm foundations. Lack of moral standards that are fixed, permanent, and unchanging. Too many lives are guided by fads or fashions. The negation of the absolute is one of our great modern day maladies. Life needs some firm foundations, some supports to steady us, some unchanging values to direct us. Moral values used to be the glue that held society together, but the pattern is obviously changed. There's much greater permissiveness nowadays. Instead of guidelines and precepts, persons provide their own rules. Ethical values become whims of our emotions. Previously accepted foundations are now viewed as evil factors that thwart the natural impulses. Self-discipline, we are warned, represses the human spirit. And the individual ought to be the ultimate authority of what is right and what is wrong. In 30 years of college teaching, Professor Robert Simon had not met a student who denied that the Holocaust actually occurred. What he sees increasingly, though, is that students either deny that the Holocaust was real or that those same students can't bring themselves to say that killing millions of people is wrong. Simon, who teaches philosophy at nearby Hamilton College, reports that about 25% of his students are reluctant to make moral judgments, even about the Holocaust. Of course I dislike the Nazis, one of them commented, but who's to say they are morally wrong? I would argue that today more than ever, we need firm foundations to steady us in life, just as that cleat steadied the ladder in the upstairs of that farmhouse. The great asset of our religious heritage is that it provides for us some definite, unchanging, and fixed foundations. God, remember, communicated with Moses and provided a set of specific laws and indicated that if the Hebrew people obeyed these laws, they would have firm foundations on which to grow and build and develop. And such did change the Hebrew people from a crowd into a nation. And later, Jesus endorsed the same principles. Moreover, he expanded upon these foundations, and they weren't easy challenges. He thrust at us. It's difficult sometimes to be honest, isn't it? And it's almost impossible to bear someone else's burden. It's impractical to forgive people who wrong us. It's ridiculous to love our enemies. It's absurd to love the people 
that we know who don't like us. These teachings of Jesus can be annoying. They can be inconvenient. But they also provide the firm foundation that we need. Charlie Brown and Peppermint Patty are seated under a tree when she asks with a sigh, do you know any good rules for living, Chuck? And Charlie Brown advises, keep the ball low. Don't leave your crayons in the sun. Use dental floss every day. Always knock before entering. Don't let the ants get in the sugar. And mystified, Patty asks, will those rules give me a better life? Well, just as in that old farmhouse where the cleat was so necessary to provide a firm and safe foundation for the ladder to the attic, so our Christian faith provides an inventory of beliefs and a consequent code of conduct that provides firm foundations. Longtime great author Henry Drummond of years past told a story about a group of men who were shipwrecked in the mid-Atlantic. They had taken to a small boat and they were adrift on a very stormy sea. After floating about for several days, they were delighted one night when they saw approaching them through the darkness, the lights of a passing ocean liner. Problem was how to make the ocean liner aware of their plight. Was there a lantern anywhere? Feverishly, they fumbled about in a locker in the tiny craft, and they did indeed come upon a lantern. But was there a candle in it? There was. Anyone have a match? With frantic haste, they searched their pockets, rummaging through the folds and the linings of their garments in an effort to discover one. And finally, a match was found, but there was only one. And it dawned on them that somebody had to take the awful responsibility of striking that solitary match. It was all that stood between those men and death by drowning or starving. The liner was steaming by. Soon it would pass, and that singular chance would be lost. What was to be done? Well, they decided to cast lots, and the lot fell upon the youngest there. And so with trembling fingers, and a prayer on his lips, he took the match and he struck it. For a moment, just for a moment, the flame flickered as though ready to go out. But shielding it with his cupped hands, he thrust it through the open door of the lantern, lit the stub of the candle, and quickly closed the shutter. Cheering wildly, his companions fastened the lantern to the end of an oar, and they waved it back and forth, hoisting it as high as they could. And the liner stopped and lowered a small boat and rescued the men. I see that story as a parable of the church today. The church and we the congregations at our best can continue to provide light in the darkness. Let's pray.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts, O Lord, be acceptable in your sight. You who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Servants depart in peace according to your gracious word. Our eyes have seen the glory of salvation prepared for all the people of the world. Now may the Lord bless you. And make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you blessed peace for now and evermore.